On this episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to kind of go back and look briefly at Saturday night's college football games dealing with teams from the Carolinas. So we're dealing with Clemson and we're dealing with South Carolina. And we're also going to go ahead and start looking early predictions without the betting lines on week two's college football games in the Carolinas. Before we get into today's content, make sure you subscribe, folks. It's free of charge. It doesn't cost anything. Pound that like button, hit that bell notification to be notified of future videos like these on the college sports in the Carolinas or the Charlotte Hornets, Carolina Hurricanes, and Carolina Panthers. And folks, leave me some comments. I love the dialogue. Okay, folks, we're going to briefly look. I mainly followed the Georgia Clemson game last night. I, I did look at some brief highlights. I tried to go online and search, being that South Carolina was playing Eastern Illinois, and, and I didn't have access to that game. Um, dealing with the South Carolina Eastern Illinois game, South Carolina did leave some points on the board. Uh, quarterback had a crucial turnover at one point. Um, you know, I can look that by the time it was halftime, they come out of halftime, they kind of they kind of pumped the brakes a little bit and took it a little easy. Uh, the last score South Carolina had was on an interception, I believe. Could have been a fun, I think it was an interception. So a defensive touchdown um, to give them the 46 points. Um, had a nice run by the running back from South Carolina. Uh, really put a nice run on them. And they just overpowered an F FCS school. South Carolina, I don't know how good they are. Uh, but they're definitely good enough to beat teams that they should beat without a problem. The Eastern Illinois Panthers really didn't stand a chance. And like I said, South Carolina pulls out this game 46 to nothing. Now, Gamecock fans had to really be happy, too, that once their game was over, they find out that uh, fellow rival uh, Clemson ends up losing in Charlotte uh, at the Duke Mayo Classic to Georgia. That was number three Clemson and number five, Georgia. This is an evenly matched game, folks. And Clemson was favored by a field goal, mainly from the home field being with Charlotte, a closer game for Clemson, uh, ACC championship land than, than what it is for Georgia and the SEC. Um, Clemson goes down in this game 10-3 to to Georgia. But we got to really look at this. Clemson was on the verge. It was in the, not what, six, seven minutes to go, maybe eight, nine, I know, but less than ten minutes to go before halftime. There was no score. The defenses were really dominating this game, especially Georgia's defense. Clemson's line looked a little weak. Quarterback didn't play bad. He just was under so much duress and pressure. And you have some receivers that aren't quite up to speed yet, whether it's the Clemson receivers because of the veteran depth in the past. And it showed, folks, Georgia's defense was all over the place. I believe they had seven sacks in this game, if I'm not mistaken. But the game is no score. Uh, Clemson's really on the verge of being in field goal range. I think it was just right on the cusp. Uh, if they could have got a completion, I don't know if they got a first down, but they could have gained a few yards. It would have been a long field goal attempt, but they could have been the ones putting the first points on the board. But, man, it looked like Georgia's corner really baited the throw. The, the receiver wasn't in good position, and the corner swooped in, picked it off, 70-some yards to the house for a touchdown. And that's why I said if the ball would have been caught, the man would have went down. You're, you're talking basically, you know, about a 40-yard field goal, which was doable by Clemson standards. Uh, but 7 nothing, Georgia at this point in time. Uh, the next thing you know, we, we go into the second half. Uh, Georgia... Uh, gets an opportunity to go down and score. Um, they throw an interception. Clemson had really good field position. Um, they can't capitalize. They can't even get in field goal range because Georgia's defense is so good. And all all Clemson would have had it done is kind of move the ball like they did on that one drive through interception. Because of the field position, they got a range that could have got a field goal. Um, but anyway, Georgia does get another shot. They get a field goal. They go up 10 to nothing. Uh, Clemson finally musters up a field goal. They get an opportunity to get in range before the end of the game, and it's 10-3. to Clemson's last two possessions, man, Georgia was all over them. Now, I want to really look at this, folks. I don't think Clemson is a bad team. The ACC is definitely down. I mean, you got Georgia Tech out here losing to Northern Illinois at Georgia Tech. You got Duke losing at Charlotte. 
Uh, of course, I know some other ACC schools. Miami got thrashed by Alabama. Um, we'll see how Florida State does against uh, Notre Dame uh, on Sunday. However, you know, just some of these ACC games, the ACC did not perform well. North Carolina was supposed to be one of the premier schools, and they went down at Virginia Tech, which is another ACC school, uh, but they were supposed to be a premier team. Now, NC State looked good, and they're thrashing win over South Florida. Wake Forest looked really good over their win against uh, Old Dominion. Um, but Clemson still might be the best team in the ACC. But they're going to have to really watch out for NC State. And uh, if they have to play Wake, too, it's going to be a good game. But I do see Clemson, other than the NC State game, in my opinion, really not having a problem with their schedule. Um, now, they do have South Carolina in the end, and that could be a battle. But Clemson will be there. Now, will they be in the, the Final Four to play for a championship? I don't know. They do have a lot of youth. Georgia played the part. But remember, guy doesn't get the interception for a touchdown. This game can go either way, folks. Now, we'll get into week two's games. First game we got on Friday night is a 7.30 game on ESPN2. Kansas is 1-0. They barely beat South Dakota and FCS schools 17-14. They're going to play Coastal Carolina, number 22 in the country, who's coming off that impressive win against the Citadel. It's an FCS school. And the point spread's not out yet, folks. But I've got Coastal Carolina handling the Big 12s, Kansas, 34-20. And Coastal will go to 2 and up. You know, North Carolina A&T is an FCS school. They're playing at Duke. And Duke's 0-1. North Carolina A&T is 0-1. Uh, North Carolina A&T, I believe, lost to, um, I want to say it was Furman, 29-6, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, South Carolina FCS school. Didn't look too well in the process. But Duke lost to Charlotte in Charlotte by three. I do have Duke winning this game 26 to 17. Like I said, no point spread, but I do have Duke beating North Carolina A&T. And that's going to be 8 o'clock Friday night on the ACC Network. Now, Saturday, we start the ball rolling at 12 noon. South Carolina already won another impressive win like I already spoke about against uh, Eastern Illinois. They're traveling in Greenville to play East Carolina, East Carolina's first home game. Remember, East Carolina's coming off that double-digit loss to App State. Uh, I do see South Carolina winning this game. I just don't think East Carolina's got enough horses. If their line's going to struggle with Appalachian State, they're sure going to struggle with this South Carolina team. But I do see a closer game uh, than what South Carolina had against Eastern Illinois. So I've got a 31-19 South Carolina win. Same time at 12 o'clock on the ACC network, but not the primary network. I guess it's the, uh, the streaming part, the ACC network. Norfolk State, FCS school, coming off a 49-10 loss to Toledo. Has got to play Wake Forest, who thrashed Old Dominion, who's in the same city as Norfolk State in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, Wake Forest, there's no spread, but I've got them winning 38-7 over Norfolk State to go 2-0 in that game. Then we've got South Carolina State, an FCS school playing at Clemson. Now, Clemson's going to be angry because of that Georgia loss. And I think they're going to take it out on South Carolina State. South Carolina State's 0-1. They're coming off an FCS loss, 42-41 to Florida, Alabama A&M. Uh, Clemson, like I said, that loss against Georgia. I've got Clemson beating South Carolina State 45-7. So Clemson will be 1-1. Now here's a game you got to pay attention to. Gardner-Webb, North Carolina School. Um, they are 1-0. Uh, no, they're coming off a 30-20 loss. Uh, I'm trying to remember who did all 30 to 26 loss. They lost to another FCS school. Um, they're going to play Charlotte at Charlotte. Charlotte's coming off that big win against Duke. But I see Gardner Webb in the upset here, folks. I know Gardner Webb, like I said, they lost 30 to 26, um, 30 to 25. Gardner Webb lost. Um, they lost to another, uh, I believe, an FCS school, and I, I can't think of the, the name of the team they lost to. It was a very, very close game. Um, and they're going to end up probably, I, I see him pulling the upset over Charlotte, 28-26 Gardner-Webb. Mainly because the Gardner-Webb loss was a close game against a good school. 
and Charlotte's win against Duke. I think they're going to be so overhyped. That's why I'm giving Gardner Webb the upset two point win over Charlotte in this ESPN stream game at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Now, I have Appalachian State 1 0 with their game against East Carolina, traveling to play Miami and Florida at Miami. Miami's coming off that thrash into Alabama. It's on ESPNU at 7 o'clock Saturday. Now, many times I'd probably pick Miami to win coming off the loss to Alabama. But East Carolina coming off the win against East Carolina, big win for them. But I don't think they're going to overlook Miami. I think they're really looking at Miami as like we got to prove ourselves more. And I've got Appalachian State upset Miami 27-26. to So Appalachian State goes 2-0. and That's my two big games right there. Gardner-Webb over Charlotte. Appalachian State over Miami. Now, NC State, their impressive win over South Florida. They're going to play Mississippi State, who had a 35-34 win at home against Louisiana Tech, Sun Belt School. I do think NC State's going to go to Mississippi State and win this game 31-21. They're not going to shut them out. I do think they'll get a double-digit win. That's still an SEC school. But Mississippi State, if they struggle at home with Louisiana Tech, they're going to have our hands full with NC State. So I've got an NC State win, 31-21. And finally, I've got Georgia State, an FBS school playing in the Sun Belt. They lost to Army 43-10 to the first week. 43-10 to to Army, folks. Well, they're playing North Carolina, who had that 17-10 upset loss to Virginia Tech. I think North Carolina will bounce back in Chapel Hill, and they're going to beat Georgia State 36. So, Folks, what do you think? There's no point spreads out yet, so pound that like button. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Do you have different games, uh, wins by teams? Do you feel find some of my scores a little off? Let me know what you think. Leave me some comments. Pound that like button. Pound that uh, notification to be notified of future content like in today's video. And by all means, folks, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. I will see you next time on another edition of Carolina Sports Guy.